Hi and welcome back to the channel. My name is Nicole with MorningChores.com and today we're going to show you how to harvest garlic. Garlic is a super easy plant you can implement in your garden. It's something I plant every single year. Garlic is usually planted in the fall and it's ready for harvest by June or July. This upcoming autumn, I will be doing a video on how to plant garlic. So today we're strictly gonna show you how to harvest it. A cool thing about garlic is you actually get two harvests from the same plant. In early spring, you harvest what's called the scape. The scape is a spiral shoot that grows up from the middle of the plant. I already harvested my scapes earlier this spring, which you can watch in this clip right here. The very cool thing about garlic is that early in the season, usually in May, in my geographical location, the garlic will develop something called a scape. And what the scape is, is the spiral shoot that comes up the middle. And as soon as these appear, you want to go ahead and harvest them. And the reason is, is one, you can eat them, which I'll explain here in a minute. But the second reason you want to harvest these is when you harvest these, then the plant will spend all of its energy it would have spent on that scape, making the bulb of your garlic much bigger, better, and more flavorful. So it's really important to keep an eye on your garlic as it grows up and grows tall in early spring and make sure you keep an eye out for these beautiful scapes. So as you can see, this right here is the scape and you can see it spirals around and some of them get really crazy, it almost looks like a roller coaster. But how you wanna harvest them is you wanna find where it meets up with the first leaf. You can even trim down a little bit further and you just wanna take a pair of scissors and clip it just like this. And you can rip off that extra leaf and there you have your scape. Scapes can be enjoyed in your cooking in a lot of different ways. They can be used raw in salads. You can also bread them and fry them and use them as a substitute for french fries. You can add them to stir fries. Really the sky's the limit and they're absolutely delicious and full of flavor. The first sign that your garlic is ready for harvest is the foliage will start dying off. It will turn a yellow brown and the leaves will start dying off from the top and work its way down. And that is the first sign that your garlic is ready for harvest. You should see this by the end of June, beginning of July. Another way that you can test that your garlic is ready for harvest is to dig one up and see what it looks like. This is a good thing to do before you go crazy and harvest all your garlic. That way you make sure that it's ready. This is the bulb that I just harvested and there's a couple things you can look at to distinguish if it's ready for harvest or not. The first thing is it should have distinguishable clothes. So you can see these little bumps going around the bulb. That is a sign that it is divided into clothes. And the second thing you want to look for is the texture of the cover. It should have a paper-like texture. Now it will be a little damp because it's been in the soil, but you want to have that paper-like consistency. So I will definitely say that these are ready for harvest. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the rest of them up. The first step in harvesting your garlic is to gently pull back the wood chips in the soil. You really don't want to use shovels or spades for this job because you could damage the bulb. If you need to use one, try to be very, very careful. Once the bulb is exposed, go ahead and gently pull up. And that is it. Harvesting garlic is really easy and simple. Now that we're done harvesting our garlic, it's time to cure it. Curing garlic is really easy and simple, and all you need are some scissors, string, and I'm gonna keep a cloth on my lap because this can get pretty messy. But that is it, that is all you need. The purpose of curing your garlic is you're drying it out so that it will last longer in storage. So you definitely do not wanna skip out on this step. It's really, really important. So what you're going to do is take five to eight bulbs of garlic. You don't want to do too many 
in a bundle because you need good circulation in between your garlic bulbs. So I'm gonna just kind of judge it based on the size of the bulbs. Here I have eight garlic bulbs and what I'm gonna do is take the string and tie it together right here. So now just take your string and you wanna leave enough so that after we tie this, you have enough string to hang the garlic. So you wanna cut a good amount off for each bundle. Just like this, very simple. One bundle down, several more to go. Now that we have our garlic bundled, it's time to hang it up to dry. I like to dry mine in the shed because you need a dry, dark place to cure your garlic, and my shed works really well. If you don't have a shed, you can always hang this in your garage. That's another great place to cure your garlic. How you hang your garlic is really a personal preference. Some people like to hang it upside down, others right side up, and then others even like to lay them on a mesh tray so that there's circulation coming from the top and the bottom. Whatever you prefer, there's really not a wrong way. The key is good circulation in a hot, dry location. Got my garlic hung. It is best to let your garlic cure for two weeks. So if you have a hard time remembering, make a little reminder on your calendar that your garlic is done curing. We will be doing a follow-up video on how to take your garlic from the curing process to the storage process and sharing some different storage methods. And then in the fall, we'll be doing a video on how to plant garlic. So you can look forward to both of those videos in the near future. Thank you so much for joining me in today's video. I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll also see you in next week's video. You can head over to morningchores.com where you'll find all kinds of information on homesteading, gardening, DIY, and much, much more. Have a wonderful day, and we'll see you next time.